Tonight, four amazing restaurants will battle it out for a place in the final of my best restaurant competition. And it's the mother of all battles with the winners of the British, Indian, North African and French heats facing sudden death elimination. I'm going to be testing them to breaking point. The table has just come in and the cereal complainers. The two surviving restaurants will go on to face an onslaught of tough challenges. This space now becomes your restaurants. Who will go through to the final? Last week, Bristol's culinary wizards, Casimir, triumphed in the first semi-final. Well done. You can smile. Now four restaurants will compete in the second semi-final for a chance to take on Casimir in the grand final. Competing for that place, the best of British, Sheffield's The Milestone. Indian winners from Bradford, Prashad. My best North African, Azu from London. And finally, winner of the French heat, Winchigan Fields from Lincolnshire. First, I want to know if they've corrected the problems that I identified early in the competition. You need to look at your service. To help me find out, I sent in a team of secret diners. What is in that? That's horrid. But there's a big surprise in store for these restaurants. I'm going to throw two of them out right now. It's sudden death elimination. Which two restaurants will survive? First to face possible elimination, our French winners, Winchigan Fields. Head chef and owner Colin is aiming for the ultimate fine dining experience. He's created a luxurious dining room and serves exquisite food. But I thought Colin was trying too hard, overloading his diners with too many appetizers and too many waiters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Boo, any more? Look at all you guys. Just check there's no one in here. Uh, I don't know. With their place in the final at stake, I've since sent in another secret diner, Rob Allison, an expert foodie with a critical eye. Oh. And I've sent all my semi-finalists their own copy of the footage so that they know what I'm judging them on. Yeah, this is our second appetizer or mousse bouche. Um, sometimes these little touches get too much and oh, I've ordered my meal. I want my long scenes. I've told Colin endless times, less is more. And here we go again. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. This dish looks absolutely delicious, but it's not mine. <laughs> oh. Really perfectly cooked long steam. It's beautiful. I mean, the mix upon the, the starter, I mean, disaster. Um, I mean, it happens probably 1% of the time, and, and guess what? <laughs> it's him. Yeah, it's just not good enough. Next to face undercover scrutiny are Indian winners Prasad from Bradford. Somebody pass the puri, please. Mum Kalshi and daughter-in-law Minel produce some of the best food I've ever eaten. And it's all vegetarian. That is delicious. One mouthful of that, I feel like I'm back in Mumbai. No, I can't leave that to waste. I've got to eat some more of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Son Bobby runs front of house with charm and warmth. Cheryl Farmer is a food expert with 20 years' experience. I'm expecting her to love this place as much as I did. But when she went in undercover, Bobby wasn't anywhere to be seen. Instead, another member of staff was running front of house. It seems like the man's rushed off to go back to, uh, to, go back to his cooking. It would be nice to have been offered a drink at that before, wasn't it? Nobody asking the secret diner for drinks, and they're just left alone. I mean, this doesn't even look like the same restaurant. A bit of soundproofing on the kitchen. It's nice to hear kind of chatter in the background, but you don't hear people scraping the fans out. You can hear this kitchen porter, by the sound of things, beating the hell out of his pans, cleaning. This looks like a completely different restaurant. The food was really lovely. It was um, all the dishes were really nice and spiced. My secret diners love the food. Um, thank God because they're not enjoying the service. Gordon's gonna absolutely crucify me. It's about getting it right every time. The contrast from that footage in comparison to what I received last time, it's night and day. Next to face my video evidence is a zoo from London. In the North African heat, Head Chef Chris produced some wonderful, authentic Algerian food. 
sardines ah, and hummus. They're delicious. Merci. But my coach trip exposed some weaknesses front of house. On table four, can you remember what he did? That's done twice. I've sent in undercover critic Simon Davis to see if Chris has ironed out his front of house problems and is still sending out perfectly cooked food. And that's the chicken man. A little bit dry, the chicken. Damn, disappointing. Uh, chicken slightly overcooked, dry. Um, this actual sauce. It's absolutely lovely. I mean, actually, one of the nicest yeah. things I've tasted. Simple, charming, and delicious. But they have to be consistent. Finally, it's the milestone from Sheffield. Run by four ambitious young men, this restaurant is reinventing classic British food. But they made errors when my last secret diner paid a visit. You eat that? Yeah. Would you eat that? No. So why should I eat it? To progress in this competition, I need to know the milestone team are learning from their mistakes. This is nice. It's really um, quite a nice, really nice texture. And it goes really nicely with the cumin seeds and the flatbread. Let's start with a little freebie, um, homemade hummus uh, with cumin and flatbread. Thank you. Next up, it's place fillets. Mm, the fish Served with a lemon pith puree. What is in that? That's horrid. It's lemon. Places are delicate. Fish and it needs help. Acidic, certainly, but not maybe lemon pith. Slightly bitter. It's not an abundance of first stuff, is it? This is for the one girl in the table. Foxy. My one problem with Milestone is their lack of experience. Can they get better? I'm... I'm uncertain. All four restaurants are waiting with baity breath for a phone call from me. They know that two of them are about to leave the competition. So tense. So tense. Yeah, it's all on this phone call, really. How's the restaurant? How may I help you? Hi, is that Chris? Oh, oui, monsieur. Hi, Simon. Hello, Gordon. How are you? Hi, bro. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little bit stressed, um, but I'm well. Unfortunately, today, I have to eliminate two restaurants from the competition. Yeah. yeah. There's only one waitress trying to take care of eight or ten tables. You've got to match the food with the service, right? Yeah. Next grill was a little bit too dry, and the chicken was overcooked. A zoo, right? Is not going any further in the competition. That's no problem. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. No worries. But continue doing what you're doing, will you? Okay. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Au revoir. That's it. Stops here. It's really disappointing for not winning. I am like gutted. I wanted to win this competition with my soul. I'm taking a break. It's not going to get easier. Simon, I am really sorry. But you guys are going to have to keep on working incredibly hard because you're the next round. Of <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, cheers, God. Yeah. I've, just, I've just had a hard time. Well done. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. 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 I can't put into words how much it, it, it means to me personally. It's the biggest thing I've ever done in my career. It's the second semi-final of my nationwide restaurant competition. Azu are out, and British Heat winners, the Milestone, have survived my sudden death elimination. They will now compete for a place in the final against either my best Indian, Prashad, or my best French restaurant, Winchingham Fields. Hi, is that Colin? Yes, it is. Hi, Bobby, it's Gordon. Hi, Gordon. Bobby? Yeah. I'm pissed off. Yeah. I have to eliminate two restaurants from this competition. 
I saw those plates getting put uh, down to the wrong uh, position. I, I got so frustrated because I could have screamed. Then you've got that level of support in the dying room. It should be absolute perfection. You've really shone up until now. And you have to focus in that restaurant on a daily basis. Yeah. Winchingham Fields. Is leaving the competition. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Take care. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Very gutting because I know we are, you know, um, so much better than, than that. But that's consistency for you. You, know, you need to be, you know, bang on every time, all the time. Right now, you need to focus because you're going through to the next stage. Oh. oh my god. Good, 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 good. Bobby. I will never ever let you I down again. You. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. They need to focus now. And he's been given a lifeline. And the restaurants across the board is too good to leave this competition. Two fantastic restaurants remain, both desperate for a place in the final. Now, I've got a big shot for them. Oh my God. I'm about to pay a surprise visit to my two remaining semi-finalists. To help me decide on who should go through to the final, I've enlisted two trusted lieutenants for a second opinion on the strengths and the weaknesses of these amazing restaurants. Michelin starred chef Angela Hartnett needs no introduction. An undercover diner Simon Davis, a top restaurant critic and a confirmed carnivore. It's time to surprise Prashad in Bradford. This is the smallest rest of the competition, but they have the biggest heart. I know they'll fight tooth and nail for a place in the final, and after letting my secret diner down, they'll need to. How did they react to it? Mortified. May I admit? Really mortified. I'll throw them a lifeline because I really believe in these guys, and today it's going to be nothing less than perfect. Today, Prashad will need to pull out all the stops to impress us, but they have absolutely no idea that we're about to walk through the door. Mom, Mom, I bet you're okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Very good. How are you? Very well. Good. Good to see you. Didn't expect to see me, did you? No, I didn't. No. Have a seat. Yeah. Angela, please. Thank you. Oh, uh, when I heard he's here, I was so nervous and oh, I get panicking, you know. I've just found my, my first bugbear. What? What? That bloody door alarm oh, yeah. when everyone steps in. Welcome to Prashad. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you very much. You. Very, very privileged to see you, actually. Any drinks for you? I'll have the mango lassi. The mango lassi. Yeah. Cool. Mango lassi as well, please. Thank okay. you. I'll have a faluda. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, warm reception. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I know Prashad will be trying to impress me today, but every customer needs the same treatment. So I've got another trick up my sleeve. Angela's mum, Juliana, is here too. She's also a fantastic chef, and she'll be a secret extra pair of eyes and ears. And Bobby, we're up against it time-wise today. I've got 90 minutes. Okay. So we could take the order as quick as possible. Thank you so much. We're hungry, and we want to try as much of this food as possible. So we're going to bombard the kitchen with orders. I'd like to go for the um, masala dosa. The harabara kebab. Can we have the pea? Pea kachori. And then maybe some puri as well. The chorli. The special shot. Corn roll as well, please. Anything else you'd recommend? Masala dosa. The best dosa I had was in Delhi so far. I'll try one. Out. Yeah. Give me a masala dosa. Yeah, do that. Perfect. You can compete with Delhi. Guys, listen, yeah? I don't want any mistake. This is a big order. Minal is focused on my table but will she pay as much attention to Angela's mum? In a great restaurant, every diner is a VIP. One person must room, but yeah, now. Quick, Wait. quick, I need now. Come on, hurry up. What the hell are you doing? We're panicking. You don't need to panic, you don't need to be nervous. We're on fire, this is Prashad, this is what we do. Okay, the room is mine. Hey, the room is mine, stick on, stick on, mine. They're very vocal in the kitchen. I mean, yeah. very, very vocal in the kitchen. Mom, medium chat. Anybody have no for you? Shouting is fine, as long as it produces results. I need puris. Order is ready now. Thank you. Lovely, thank you. Simon, 
Thank you. Thank you. The contented silence at our table speaks volumes. Absolutely yeah. delicious. Yeah. I'm really good. Fantastic. And I'm a major yeah. carnivore. Mm. Wow. That's delicious. Isn't it? Delicious? I mean, it really is. Dish after dish is delivered with charm. Angelo, that's your zucchini and chana dal with no coriander. Thank you. Each one hitting way above the mark. Well, let's go Isn't with that. that fantastic? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. It just looks so grand. Grand, authentic, and smells amazing. It's like a banquet. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. Phenomenal, I think. Absolutely phenomenal. It's exceptional vegetarian cuisine. Mom! Yes? Minel! Oh my god, they're loving the food. <laughs> Who's missing meat? Yeah. <laughs> Not me. It's time to give Prasad a collective appraisal. So, um, I was a little bit nervous coming back today, to be totally honest. Angela, how was it for you? I know, for me, phenomenal food. Absolutely Thank phenomenal. You. Blown away. I thought it was so good. Masala dosa? Oh, as good as the one I had in Delhi. Yeah, yeah it was brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Simon? The stuff you do just, you know, beggars yeah. belief. That kofta with the cauliflower is just it's a revelation. Yeah, okay. um, food today, flawless, outstanding. Lovely warm service. But we've been watching everything. I mean, every table. And there's another surprise because we have an extraordinary lady here, Mrs. Hartnett, Andrew's mum. Thank you. Oh, mom. Thank Hello. You Thank you. Mrs. Hartnett. Thank you. Oh. Right. See, this lady taught me how to cook, oh. and her mother oh. taught her how to I'm cook. Not just so. good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you honestly think, Mum? No, you like fabulous it? food. I love those balls with potatoes and dal. Everything is perfect. And Bobby, the service. Oh, it was wonderful! Good. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, food. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We are so pleased you are here. Good. Would you come back? Oh God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Today was about redemption, yeah, good, and you yeah. certainly redeemed yourselves. And yeah. this whole experience will help me decide on who's going through the final. Uh, thank you for a delicious, yeah. delicious yeah. lunch. Yeah. Can you do yeah. something with that door? Yeah, yeah? please, that alarm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, three heavyweights in the food industry turning up to an ex laundrette in the middle of Bradford, um, looking for fault, being demanding, being difficult. And could we find fault? No. We're back on track. We're back there. I think we're going to go and win. <laughs> My other semi-finalist is the milestone. OK, on the way to Sheffield. How will they cope with the three of us dropping in for a surprise dinner? Four guys that don't give up on anything. They rear their own pigs, wow. they make their own bread, they churn their own butter, yeah. and they really are pushing the boundaries out beyond belief. So uh, yeah. I think we'll be impressed. Put the water crest on very last as it's going. Since I first met these young guns, they've impressed me with their mixture of classic and creative British dishes. It's about Yorkshire people, Yorkshire chefs producing Yorkshire food. But they also run a cooking school and an outside catering company, as well as the restaurant. And I can't help but feel they're trying too hard. Straight upstairs? Yes. With so many fingers and so many pies, sometimes they've fallen short of perfection. Here we go. How are you? Good to see you again. Likewise, you didn't expect to see us, did you? No. All right, got in. Simon, tonight I'm with two very influential guests and we're going to be looking at everything. Table for three. There's a table that's just come in and the cereal complainers. They go everywhere and they just slate, you know, my matter what. <laughs> this evening's dinner menu for you. Thank you. Your adrenaline's pumping. He's the, he's the main man, isn't he? So he's the person to impress. I know that we focus on me and my guests. But how will they treat Angela's sister, Anne, who's eating on the other side of the dining room? It's a lot more elaborate than I had the impression of from you really? guys. Yeah, just things like Parmesan gnocchi, yeah. wild mushroom cannelloni. Quirky. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what I mean? It's not your average. Like yeah, soil and shoots. You know I mean? radish snow. Yeah. They're pushing the boat out. Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. hope it tastes as good as it sounds. And actually, it does seem nice and seasonal. Head chef Simon and sous chef James have made their mark by breaking all the rules serving up local ingredients with a quirky twist. For our starters, we've ordered black pudding with bacon, pepper mackerel with horseradish snow, and a tomato consomme with a flower pot full of tapenade for soil and pea shoots. Is there an earthquake? Was that your hand shaking? Simmer. <laughs> Thank you. Simmer. Thank you. Simmer. 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 I feel like we're in Villa Bend, the flower pot, mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to eat a soup and navigate your way around a, uh, a flower pot. Things like this, I just want to throw at the chef. We'll get his head and go 
It's just gimmick, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to see how it tastes. What is that? That is tapenade. How much tapenade can you put in a dish like that? I mean, I know that's the soil, but bloody hell. That doesn't make sense. Too much soil, less is more. And this is all they need to know, less yeah. is more. They're keen as mustard. I mean, really keen, but far too ambitious for their own good. The minute you start trying to become too clever, you're up for intense scrutiny. It's not going to like to affect it. Main course is next. For our mains, we've gone more conventional. Salmon wrapped in a herb crust, vegetarian cannelloni, and bavette of beef. I mean, they're attractive looking dishes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the presentation. I actually think this is a really well sourced meat, well cooked, well handled. If I had any criticism, it would be the red wine jus. Because mm -hmm. it's really sweet. It's almost the consistency of meat mm -hmm. ribena. How's your um, cannelloni got? It's actually very nice. Mushrooms mm -hmm. are delicious. Definitely yeah, they can cook, yeah. but they just need to rain it back in. Finally, it's time for pudding. A tree of strawberry desserts, Bakewell tart. See, that looks nice. That looks good. And a great local cheese board. See, that and that fits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing here looks like it's out of Paris Hilton's bathroom. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. No. Really good. It looks delicious. And it tastes delicious. And red ice cream. Really nice. This looks great. That's actually the best thing I've eaten tonight. This one here? Yeah. That's actually nice. Time to call the team together for a debrief. Can I just say, that was delicious. Really good. Um, unfortunately, it didn't start like that. If there's one strong message, you're trying too bloody hard. I've tasted the greatness, and tonight has been a disappointment. Stick to what you're good at doing. Yeah. And for me, the secret of any good restaurant is how every other table has been looked after. And tonight, there's a second surprise. We've actually got Angela's sister having dinner with us as well. Come over, Anne. Come over, James. Hey, how are you? Very well. Very well. Hey. So how was your night, Anne? Mixed, mixed. I didn't really like the bread. I thought the bread was a bit heavy. Um, I like the tomato thing, I have to say, but I love all that. <laughs> and what was your starter, James? I had the back pudding. It was quite sticky and quite, quite heavy. So don't worry about trying to be too different when you're good at what you do. Get back to what you're good at doing and stick to that. Thank you very much. Good luck with everything, yeah. Uh, I feel like I've been told off by my dad. No value points, though. Yeah. It's, it was constructive. So it's, we have to take it on the chin and do what we can with it. It's the main thing. Yeah. I'm disappointed because I came back to the milestone for a magical experience, hoping they'd learnt, but they just want to be different. Tonight was a big disappointment. Two amazing contenders, Prashad from Bradford and the Milestone from Sheffield, are fighting to win the second semi-final of my restaurant competition. We want to serve every single customer like we do at home. Quick, now, 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 now! Later tonight, one of them will make it into the final and have the chance to be crowned my best restaurant. Prashad and Milestone once again have survived my secret diners and a flying visit which really turned both their restaurants upside down. They both now face one more gruelling test for a place in the final, a challenge that they've never faced before. I've called Prashad and the Milestone to meet me in North London. Good morning. Good morning. 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 You're probably thinking, what in the hell are we doing here this early in the morning? Standing in a pretty unimpressive room. Yeah? And look at it, bare, bleak. This space now becomes your restaurants. And you're going to transform these four walls into the most amazing pop-up restaurant. Only one restaurant's going through to the final. Make sure it's you. I'm giving each of them one floor of this empty building. 
They've got just 12 hours to create an exciting, vibrant pop-up restaurant that will open its doors at 7 p.m. for one night only. Pop-up restaurants are one of the hottest tickets in the food world. They spring up in unexpected locations, cause a big storm, and then disappear overnight. Both restaurants will have a £2,000 budget. It will be split between the chefs... 500 is enough. ..and front of house. You want to feel like you're in a wedding. You want to feel like you're in a party. You've got to make and create that atmosphere. The challenge is massive. Neither restaurant has done anything like this before. It will push them to the very limits of their creativity and their ingenuity. Matt. Players. We need to decide on players. The decisions they make now could cost them a place in the final. Wow, I love that table. Oh, well, it requires, assembly. requires assembly. A time. A pissing. <laughs> the chefs are heading to some of London's best markets to choose their ingredients for tonight's menu. Simon and James are looking for fantastic meat to wow their diners. We're looking towards the thick end of the pork belly, so we want people to enjoy what they're getting. Good quality pork cheeks. Pork liver. Yes, pork um, liver and mince. The milestone prides itself on serving amazing classic British food. That's all the fixed cheeks we got. After that disappointing flying visit, they'll need to prove to me that they can deliver great food plate after plate. The people are going to see something different. I think we don't know either. Coconut? Yes. This is a hard noise. It's a good one. Kalshi and Manel are in their element in the vegetable market. For the perfect vegetarian restaurant, you need perfect vegetables. And here's the place. Vine tomatoes. Vine tomatoes, one box over there. Prasad serve up some of the most delicious and exciting food I've ever tasted. This challenge will show me if they have the potential to develop their restaurant and thrive outside their comfort zone. But you've got 50 guests coming, yeah? Yeah. It doesn't look yeah. like there's enough. Three box. It will be enough. enough for it. Yeah. OK, good. The chefs head back to base while their front of house teams make their final purchases. Let's get that. Just a... Yeah. But have a look at... 60 of those. I see that in the glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so eight of these, yeah? Eight of those, please. Eight. That's the exact idea we're looking for. This is Prasad's chance to create an incredible interior a million miles away from their simple Bradford cafe. So we're going to get some of this one, then. How much do you want? 3.8 metres of the other one. Can I get five metres of the red? If I get rid of the red, you can have three and a half metres of each of these. Can I have five metres of both of those and I'm cancelling the red? The chefs have just six hours to create culinary magic. It's going to really show we can turn these humble ingredients into something truly spectacular on the plate. To compete, Prashad will need to make their vegetarian menu really sing. When you make the curry, it's hard to make it because we're making so fresh. They're getting, getting on with it and still we are preparing. So yes, I am a little bit nervous. We don't want to panic. When you do the panic, then you always do the mistake. These dishes include baked yam and potatoes with spiced coconut and peanut filling, vegetable pilo rice and stuffed baby aubergines. So you cut them in half? Yeah. And you stuff them with the...? With the masala. Masala? Yeah. Nice. I want both restaurants to amaze and delight my diners. I don't want carbon copies of Prasad or the Milestone. OK, you're unloading the van now, yeah? Yeah. We're opening just under four hours from now, you know that? Yeah. yeah? Give me a feel, Prashad, what are they doing? What's the, what's the objective? The objective is to give a wedding fair, to give you a little bit of an, nice. a taste of the Asia. Wow. Good luck. Thank you. Quite a complicated table, not planned for. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, it gets more complicated as we go along. OK. Guys, we're opening just under four hours, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Get going. Yes. As soon as Gordon walks in, it dawned on me what was ahead of us. We've got to perform. We don't want to let the lads down in the kitchen. They're going to do their side. We need to make sure we do our side. So there's a lot of pressure on us. With the amount of time we've got, <laughs> fingers crossed, we will literally just be ready. Bobby has been bold with his plans for the space. I hope he has time to put it off. Under pressure. Still not getting any further forward with these tables. What a mess. I know we're pushed for time. Yeah. Yeah, but just run downstairs, pop your head downstairs very quickly. All right, looking fantastic. OK. They're looking in a pretty good shape, aren't they? They are. And this is looking like a campsite. The biggest mistake we've made is we didn't go for ready-made tables. Right now, we're sort of 
on our second table, yeah. getting put together. We're opening in just under three hours from now, and I, I you know, we, we've got a lot to do. Yeah? Yeah. What are they? Uh, Colouring. Jesus, where do you go? A fucking camp shop? <laughs> We were, we were trying to go with the, with the look and the feel of the tables and match everything with the whites and the blacks. Jesus. Wow. He's fucking not impressed, is he? Gordon. Bobby's in a mess and uh, it looks dreadful. Um, pretty crap. Knife and forks and dreadful tables like they've been hanging around outside a pub. Can't see the end in sight, so quite nervous. You see, two hours. Two hours is a long time. There's no... There's... We didn't come all this way to lose because we couldn't build tables. Downstairs, the Milestone are much happier with their tables, but they haven't paid any attention to the rest of their space. The tables look great. Yeah. Yeah. The restaurant looks shit. There's no thought process with the tarting up four walls. I'm interested in a stunning restaurant, yeah? Yeah. That's what I would like to see, yeah? But have you got any fabrics? No. Cushions or... This is not, no. ...ornate pieces of furniture to liven up? No. This is it. The idea of a proper restaurant, yeah? It's not just the location, but it's a shown-off aspect. Do you know what I mean? You rear your own pigs, you make your own bread, and come in the dining room, it's like... I know what you guys are like when you use your imagination. So I give you the flexibility to go and do something out the box. Shame. Fucking up. Oh. It's a one night only. Two thousand pounds to create something exciting and magical and the wow factor. Milestone are going for something simplistic. They've played it safe, but that may not get you into the final. There's no lack of ambition in the kitchen, however. Simon and James are serving Slariac and Skate Scampi with their silver mullet. And braised oxtail accompanied by English squash and wild mushrooms. That's your oxtail. Yeah. So you should be happy. That's cooking time. Yeah. Man, it so, tastes delicious. Really nice. It's mm -hmm. not over 10 minutes, Josh. That's lovely. If they pull this food off, it will be amazing. What's this one here? Peas in there? It's a uh, motor paneer. Mm -hmm. Peas and paneer. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. That's delicious. Things are taking shape. Two tables are done. Time is on our hands. You've got all the cutlery on the table for both courses? Uh, no. We haven't unwrapped it yet. Do you care, Bobby? I care a lot, Bobby. You do? I, I, I'm worried. Shit cutlery, plain Jane dining room, and I know you can do better. I'm really sorry. With very little time left before Prashad opened their doors, Kalshi goes upstairs to the dining room. We have made some er errors, you know, uh, but we can't constantly focus on them. We can't change those errors right now. It's okay. It's okay. Just get your Yeah? Yeah. I'm sure you will do it. This is it. It's shit or bust. If it goes bad, we're back to Sheffield. We've done the best we can, but we're here to win it. Listen to me, yeah? Every part of what we do is with our heart. We're a 22-seat restaurant working our guts off. If we're not good enough, we're not good enough. We'll still give it our best shot. We're opening in just under five minutes from now, and this is it. Everything they've worked for all day depends on this service, and I've never had an evening that's been so dependent on an amazing performance in the kitchen because both restaurants have been let down by the front of house, and it's up to the kitchen now to redeem themselves in a big way and pull it back. It's seven o'clock. And outside the pop-up restaurants being run by my two semi-finalists, queues of hungry diners wait to be seated. When those customers arrive, blow them away. Warm welcome. A three-hour service. But prove to me tonight why you deserve a place in the final. Good luck to both restaurants. Each restaurant can seat 25 customers. And if they can squeeze in a second sitting, they could serve as many as 50. Good evening, my name's Bobby. Come and have a seat. I want them to really impress me and ensure my diners have a thrilling, once-in-a-lifetime dining experience. Straight away, Bobby and his brother, Mayer, are charming their guests. The chefs have put together a theme around a wedding. We're a little family restaurant. We really want you to be an extended part of our family and enjoy your meal. 
but are there diners hearing the Indian wedding bells? Talk to me about the decor. I guessed it was a wedding and I didn't yeah, read did, the title. Without reading yeah, the yeah, two did. seconds later we saw yeah. it, so I think they got it right. It's a bit sort of shabby with the, the curtains and the tables and stuff, but then the um, sort of welcoming, etc., was really, really nice. Bobby and his team are quick on the draw and start taking orders. Three yampuris, two pata. Thank you. Thank you. Downstairs is a different story. 15 minutes into service and the milestone still haven't taken any orders. Matt, Mark, while you're gassing away, get some orders in here. Yeah? I, they're not here for the life story, they're here for the experience. Come on. It's driving me fucking insane. Dining room's full and not one order into the kitchen. Right, Jay, order on. Three oxtail, one pollock. First ticket in, 25 minutes later. Meanwhile, Prashad sumptuous starters, yam and potato puri, and marinated stuffed leaf parcels are flying off the pass. And are they supposed to go out hot or room temperature? Is that the right, the right temperature? It is, yeah. It is. OK, good. It actually tastes quite nice. It's quite a subtle flavour. Madam, how's your yam? Um, this one was good, but this one's... I don't know. What is that white thing supposed to be? It's undercooked. It's kind of like... I've never seen food like this coming from you both. It's raw. Taste your food and stop rushing. Sorry. sorry Don't be sorry to me. Be sorry to your guests. We want to serve every single customer like we do at home. All right. Okay? Okay. Good luck, darling. Eight I love more. you. Dreadful start. Delicious filling. Well, what's the point of putting it in between two slices of raw yam? Three belly, one mullet. At last, the milestone boys are getting the food out. Yes, yeah, chef, that's it, man. <laughs> but there's mixed reviews. This is really nice. Yeah, but it's slightly needs a bit more. I had the cured pollock for my starter. It was altogether quite delicious. Seems quite bland. The first two tables. Food looks amazing. Needs seasoning. First two tables. Chef. Chef. Mummy puri. Yeah. Thankfully, Minal and Kalshi are starting to hit their stride. Their Punjabi main courses are delicious mutter paneer, peas with Indian curd cheese, and amazing spice stuffed aubergine are going down a storm. Uh, the aubergine and uh, potato. A uh, paneer dish was actually really, really nice. Um, full of flavour. It's spicy. It's full of full of vendia. In the kitchen, the Milestone boys are in full flow serving their mains of pan-fried silver mullet and pork cooked three ways. Service! Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, oh, here we go. So we're going to make That's the nice. texture stuff. Very, very nice. Starters went out and it was a disaster. Now the main courses are going out and it seems to be a lot more settled and more controlled. Outside, more hungry diners are waiting for the meal of their lives. Now we should start to be thinking of turning those tables, yeah? OK, now there's a queue outside for a Prashad experience. I don't want them in the freezing cold, nor do you. Back upstairs, tables relayed, and keep that energy in the dining room, please. With just an hour of service left, the Milestone are starting their second sitting. I'm up, by the way. Hi, Isabel. How's you, Isabel? But upstairs, Prashad seemed to have lost all urgency, leaving hungry diners waiting outside in the cold. At this rate, there won't be enough time before closing to take an extra sitting. Come on, come on, you've got to work and talk at the same time. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, you know, it's almost like kids say, uh, yeah, it's like not everyone's given up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Unless the whole family pulls together, no one else will be eating in Prashad tonight. Me now, Kelsey, can you go upstairs and help clear the tables, please, yeah? Please? We've got just under one hour to go, OK? So, can you go upstairs and polish the table so we get some more tables sat no, down? No, don't go upstairs yeah? and polish the table. Because you guys, I'm telling them to do it, yeah, because you need help. The customers listen, have listen to me. The table There's yet. nothing to do. So I'm asking them to give you a hand. And you'll no, get an hour ago and say, no, please go upstairs. I don't want help her to go I'm the doing the tables. You can get chippy with me. Yeah. I'm asking them, your mum, to go upstairs and help you. You get defensive. I do, yeah, because we don't like her to do those jobs. Right, we do OK, those jobs. fine. The table, don't clear the table yourself, we'll clear it. So we'll she can't you. polish the table? No, she can't. She can't relay it? No. Wow. Yeah. 
the cracked under pressure, clearing tables away and trying to sit customers that are standing outside in the cold, um, it's difficult to have that level of arrogance and get it thrown in my face like that. You know, that's, that's his call, but stay calm and deal with it. Um, I've stepped up and said to him, I shouldn't probably said to Gordon, you know, he knows exactly what should do, what shouldn't. I'm really sad because I respect that man. To stand up to him like that, not clever. Bobby has finally turned some tables, and Manel and Kalshi have fixed the problems with their yam starters to the delight of Prashad's new guests. I've got um, a yam dish, and it's, it's really spicy and really tasty. The spice is not too hot. It's just, it's just right. It's lovely. We started shit. We can finish strong. Come on. Yeah. 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 Rally them round and finish strong. Rally them round and finish strong. Come on. I can't help but want to approach you and say sorry, but uh, it's not the time, is it? Simon. Come here, man. Come here. I'm not here to fight with you, no. yeah? I'm here to support. Sure. Big day, tough day, everyone's under fucking pressure. You've got 20 minutes left, yeah. pull it back. We will. 20 minutes left, pull it back. Right, well, scamp here. Ten One second. Ten seconds oh. nothing new, yeah? I love the way both Prashad and the Milestone are now doing everything they can to serve their diners wonderful food. Quick, now, 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 now! And both dining rooms are buzzing as the final plates have been served. Best course of the evening I've had, and I'm very impressed with that. Delicious. Five, okay. four, okay. three, two, yeah. one, and stop! Seth. Turn everything off, please. Yeah. 10 p.m and service is over. It's been a long, tough day for both restaurants. <laughs> well done, man. I hope we've won this. Can't guarantee it. There's no guarantees in this, because, um, I mean, we've, we've, we've thought we've lost before and we've won, so we don't know. I know we didn't perform to the level that we would normally. A lot of people didn't, some people didn't like the food. Come here, come on. I have to really, really protect my, my ladies. We did everything the best we could. I know, I know. <laughs> Prashad and the Milestone have embraced this huge challenge and have a lot of satisfied customers. But both restaurants had problems in their kitchens and front of house. Nice. Best You're welcome, thank you. Great job. Great job. Good now I have to decide who deserves a place in the final. This has to be the toughest challenge both restaurants have ever faced. Quite frankly, from both restaurants I was disappointed because I knew that the personalities didn't shine. Tonight, you undersold yourselves. Prashad, I didn't see Bobby the face of Prashad tonight. Let's be honest. Milestone, I felt that you spent far too long getting those first three or four tables in. I'm standing outside, knocking. Get the orders in, get these guys out the traps. And on the back of your performance and your performance, let me tell you, it is so difficult to gauge an outright winner. Two phenomenal restaurants were put on the spot today. The restaurant going through to the final. Is Congratulations. Thank you You're very much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Gutted, really. Really gutted. But 
end of the day, we did our best. I'm still proud of what we did. Uh, really proud of James, the boys in the restaurant. Chin up. Yeah, let's go get some peers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well done. Well done. Yes, good job. You're in the final. And good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. What a final. Prashad versus Casimir. A small 20-seater vegetarian Indian restaurant from Bradford. Up against the Young Guns, the Michelin star. Boys, tip for the top. Fucking game on. <laughs>